Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. So for the past few months, I've been using the iPad Pro Magic Keyboard every single day. And my word, I have a lot to say about it. And I think it's because after using it for a while, I've started to realize that you know, this is more than just a random keyboard. It's more than just a fancy piece of technology. It's a piece of hardware that fundamentally changes the experience of using the iPad Pro and changes um, what you can do with it. And so for simplicity's sake, I've decided to break this video up into three parts. Firstly, I'm gonna to talk to you about the design. Secondly, I'm gonna to talk to you about the keyboard. And finally, I'm gonna to talk to you about the thing that excites me the most, the addition of a trackpad and mouse support, which in my opinion takes the iPad Pro, which is already an incredibly competent device for things like note taking, and transforms it into a completely different thing. And that, my friends, is today's video. Without a doubt, the first thing I noticed when using the Magic Keyboard was the design. And for the few people out there who are wondering what I'm talking about, the, the Magic Keyboard is nothing like the previous, um, I think it's called the Smart Keyboard Folio Case, which was very slim and sleek, but was very limiting in my opinion. So the Magic Keyboard is completely different. So there's two ways you can open it. Firstly, you can attempt to open it like a traditional laptop which I find a little bit tricky at times. But the way I like to open it is I put it vertically on the desk like that, and I just let it fold out. You're in a sort of laptop mode, as I like to call it. And if you wanna use it as a tablet with the Apple Pencil, you just pull it off and it comes right off. You wanna go back to laptop mode, you put it back on and it goes straight back on. It's intuitive, it's simple as it should be. And not only does it look remarkable in an aesthetic sense with its floating design above the keyboard, but there are little features here and there that make it tremendously more functional than the old Folio keyboard, in my opinion. For example, there is a multitude of angles at which you can tilt the screen, which is way more convenient than the two locked positions that we had with the old case. Uh, secondly, we've got a new USB-C port in the bottom left corner which you can use to charge things. Um, and mind you, this port is for charging only. So you can't put a hard drive or a USB into there, um, which sort of makes sense to me because imagine having a hard drive and USB plugged into that port and then pulling the iPad off. It's sort of, that is not a good thing. But if there was one criticism that I had of this case as a whole, it's the fact that when I wanna use the iPad as a tablet, well, I need to take it off the case to write on it. So I can't really do that while it's on the case. Like it doesn't fold beyond its fixed angle. Um, and that's okay when I'm at home because I just put the iPad on the desk. I'm not too worried about it getting scratched or anything and it just works. But I'm just thinking like, what happens when I go back to university and I'm in a laboratory or I go to some random park bench that might be a little dirty. I'm not gonna put my iPad down on that surface. And so the solution I've sort of been contemplating in my mind for a while is I take the case without the iPad in it I close it and I put the iPad on top. And, and so far it sort of just you know, works in this position. So that's why it's not a deal breaker for me. So yeah, I think it's a really compact, so far durable, well-built quality accessory. And yes, it is significantly thicker and heavier than the previous case. However, I think that sacrifice is completely worth the advantages that come with it. And the first of those advantages is a wonderful keyboard. You know, when it comes to this keyboard, all I can honestly say is it's great, it is a wonderful experience to type on, and you should go and try it out yourself. Because overall, it's a really nice size. It's a, it's a full-size keyboard, in fact. It has actual key travel, which the previous keyboard didn't really have. It's backlit, as it should be, so you can see your keys while typing in the dark. And finally, just the way it sits in the desk and the way my palms rest on it while typing. It just feels like a real keyboard. Now, as I said, I, I used to use the really flat keys on the Smart Folio keyboard. And honestly, all I ever did on this keyboard was respond to some messages, type a few emails, and browse the web. That's it. You know, when it came to anything like substantial, and by substantial I mean more than like a paragraph, I would immediately go to a computer. Because I just didn't enjoy typing for long periods of time on that keyboard. But the Magic Keyboard, on the other hand, is the exact opposite. Like, I actually look forward to typing on this keyboard. And for me, that's 
but what makes a great keyboard, the fact that you look forward to using it. But honestly, moving on, as great as the design and, and the keyboard of the Magic Keyboard is, those features haven't really blown me away. They didn't surprise me. The thing that really made a difference and sort of surprised me was the addition of the trackpad and mouse support. And so you may have seen it, but now we have a dynamic cursor, which is a circle, by the way, that actually changes shape depending on what you're doing with it. So if you're hovering over icons, it actually takes the shape of those icons. Or if you're hovering over text, it turns into a text cursor. Um, so it's not one fixed thing, it changes depending on its function. You see, the moment you have a trackpad and you have that form of input, it fundamentally changes the experience of the iPad Pro. And it's sort of hard for me to put this into words because you know, up to this point on my channel, I have only spoken about the iPad as a note taking device. Like that's all it is. And it's great at what it does. But in all my previous videos, I don't think I've ever suggested that the iPad is a competent device for doing other tasks that students do apart from note taking. So things like, you know, doing assignments, writing reports, making presentations. Cause you know, from my past experience with using the iPad, I've actually found it quite limiting when it comes to doing those things. And I have plenty of stories I could tell you about. Like for example, one day I was in a metabolism lab and we just finished an experiment. So after I entered in my data, I made a graph and then the teacher came up to me and he was looking at my work and then he noticed that I made a mistake. Um, in fact, a couple of mistakes. And I still remember him telling me, can you please change this cell, this cell and this cell? And I remember absolutely struggling when it came to just selecting a few cells on the screen because I'd never used Excel before without a mouse. Another example was when I was working on a report um, the day it was due, and I think it was due in like three hours. And I was in a rush trying to make all these changes to this report, and I can't tell you how hard it is to deal with text, you know, copy, pasting, rearranging paragraphs when you don't have a legitimate cursor or a mouse. It's actually quite hard to select the perfect amount of text in a very intuitive and efficient way. And so yet again, I needed a mouse. You know, I've tried making presentations in the iPad, I've tried making posters, but I always give up because it's so much easier on a real computer. But you see, the addition of a trackpad on the Magic Keyboard has actually solved all these issues for me. All these softwares, you know, word processors, spreadsheets, you know, presentation softwares, like right from the start, they were always designed to be used with a keyboard and a mouse. I mean, just look at the way we interact with that type of software. You know, the icons, the user interface, the way it's laid out. It's all designed to be used with a mouse. Because you see, the great thing about having a mouse is it allows you to have a greater level of precision and accuracy than when you're using your finger to touch a screen. And as blatantly obvious as that might sound, I've only been able to realize that over the past two months. Because you see, now when I'm using Excel, I don't need to worry about using my fingers or the Apple Pencil to touch the cells. Because now I have a cursor. You know, it just works. I don't need to think. And now when using word processors, it's so much easier to work with text. I mean, just simple things like, you know, selecting text and then copy pasting it. You know, it works just like a traditional computer. And you see, the thing about this keyboard is it's completely transformed what the iPad is to me. It's taken this note taking or, or note making canvas and enabled me to do a whole lot of other tasks that I've struggled to do with the iPad over the past two years. I mean, and it's not even hard to learn how to use the trackpad because the gestures are so intuitive. For example, when you're in an app, you use three fingers up to go to the home screen. You can also use three fingers horizontally to swipe between apps. You can slide one finger down to see the dock. And when you're browsing the web, you can use two fingers to scroll, just like a laptop. And you see the experience bleeds into simple daily tasks, like just answering an email becomes so much easier. Scheduling tasks in a calendar, it takes away that small bit of friction that was always there. I mean, just for a second, forget about the fancy design, the aesthetics, like what, what it looks like, and just focus on the bare functionality and what it's been able to do for me. Because you see, that's where all the value is. And so just to round off the video, I wanted to address a question that I've been getting quite a bit. And it's, is it worth it? And honestly, it depends. Like it depends on who you are and how you use the iPad. Like I know some people who just want to use the iPad to you know, take some notes, you know, read some books, play some games, browse the web, watch some videos, and that's it. And to them, this keyboard and all the advantages that come along with it 
like is of no value. But for some other people out there, it adds tremendous functionality. Like, like me, for example, I've always wanted the iPad to be more than just a tablet device that I you know, write notes on. Like I want it to be able to do some of the things that I do on a normal computer. And for like the past two years, I've had all these issues that I've sort of been ignoring. And this keyboard has come in and solved not all, but most of those issues. So just to put things in a bit of perspective. So when the iPad came out, if you were to judge it as a traditional computer, it was very much a phone with a larger screen. And over time, we've sort of seen it move towards the traditional PC, you know, with things like iPad OS and now this keyboard. You know, the iPad's really become you know, what a lot of people like to call a mobile computer. And at the moment, if I was to sort of give it a diagnosis of where it's at, for me, it's, it sort of does everything I need a computer to do when I leave the house. So now I no longer need to take a laptop with me to do a presentation. I don't need to worry about having a laptop to use Excel. And that's great and that's wonderful, but it could be so much more than what it is in my opinion. I mean, just look at what we have here. We have all three forms of input. We've got touch, we've got a keyboard and trackpad, and we've got the Apple Pencil. So in terms of hardware, in terms of the physical product, we have everything that we need. Like the iPad with the Magic Keyboard is in its complete form. Like you can't say it's lacking in that aspect. And I guess the place where a lot of the limitations are found is in the software of iPad OS. That's something to think about. You know, we, we have a lot of potential here and there's a lot the iPad could become. And there's also the question, can the iPad Pro replace laptops? I mean, I think it could be something else altogether. But yeah, I think, I think that's it for today's video. Hopefully this video sort of gives you an insight into what I think about the Magic Keyboard for those of you out there who've been asking about it. Um, that is all for today, folks. If you have questions, please leave them down in the comments below. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.